So the All Blacks have gone into Rome and done a job pretty comfortably over Italy. 66 points to 3. 10 tries to none. If you got up at 3 o'clock in the morning to watch this one in New Zealand. Yeah, she was a pretty one-sided affair. Um, didn't take the All Blacks too long to get on the board. Uh, Perinara got the first try in the ninth minute. Uh, Bodie's boot wasn't um, as flash as it has been recently. He didn't score a drop goal, which is very disappointing. But in all seriousness, uh, McKenzie got three tries. Geordie Barrett got four tries. Uh, there were also tries to Laumapi, and uh, Bowden got one for himself. <clears throat> Italy just the one penalty to Tommaso Allen. And that was early on. It was after Perinara's uh, try. It was 5-0. Uh, Italy got a penalty and made it 5-3, and then that was that was the end of the scoring for Italy. That was about 12 minutes. All the rest was New Zealand. Um, I guess overall, from the Italian perspective, a little bit disappointing. I mean, it's always going to be tough when you play New Zealand. And especially because they've just come off a loss and pretty keen to sign off uh, this year on a high. There was probably a small chance that New Zealand would be like a little error prone if they were trying to to do too much and there were a few errors um you know so it was a little bit of drizzle so there were some handling errors early <clears throat> but there was enough that stuck and there were some pretty poor defensive plays from the italians that just made this one blow out so yeah like i said a bit disappointing the italian team was was largely unchanged from a side which put in a really good shift against australia but they were like kind of off the pace today. And once the score got to a certain point, um, I guess those energy levels just dropped, which um, which didn't help things. But yeah, uh, like I said, handling errors let down early. Uh, the ref went off after about 23 minutes. He, he has an injury to his knee. I think he got a bump from, was it Scott Barrett? Uh, Scott Barrett, also the only Barrett not to get on the scoreboard here. None of the Fords got on the scoreboard, so um, disappointing from him. I'm joking, of course. Um, yeah, Italian Scrum got penalised. Their Moore got turned over. The All Blacks just had a big lead. Yeah, man. Um, it's really... Yeah, I had to run through the stats. I mean, at halftime... The All Blacks had 380 run meters to the Italians, 108. Position of territory was like 60-40 to New Zealand. Tackling percentage, New Zealand only 78, which is low for them, but Italy 58. Uh, penalties conceded 6-3, to three, Italians with 6. Are uh, scouring the game for stats, which make the Italians a bit better, but... Yeah, it was just honestly, I think last week was, there was their game, because... There didn't seem to, have, uh, to be that much left for this week. And I suppose with the All Blacks, as I said, there was a small chance that they would come out a bit disjointed with a few changes and perhaps under a bit of pressure. But a lot of these guys who who haven't been in the team for a wee while really put their hands up. Um, Fafita had some really big runs. La Mape, uh fairly quiet in the first half, but had a pretty impressive second half. Jordy Barrett is probably the main guy who's come in for a ton of scrutiny this year. Uh, he put in a four-try shift, and one of those tries, was it the second one? The one right on half time, like 40, 41 minutes. Uh, it was a cross kick from his brother, and I mean, he's a tall guy. I think he's 195 centimeters, so like six foot five, and yeah, um, having him collecting cross kicks is, is a useful option because he's taller than a lot of the players in, in his position, so... He, he took that ball like a champ. That was probably the try of the game. Although there were a fair few tries to compete with in this one. So, yeah, that, that was cool. Um, he's not really played wing before. They asked him in the post-match, have you, have you played wing? And he said, not really. He's been training a fair bit at wing. But, I mean, to put on the black jersey and, and get four tries in a position you haven't really played in. Uh, again, it is pretty impressive. Uh, they, they made a fair few subs early. Papali'i came on uh, for Savia fairly early. Um, Moonga came on for Barrett. There's Bodhi pretty early. Te Toiroa Tehuriorangi came on uh, for Perinara. So a fair few guys got a run, which was good to see. You know, final game of the season. Uh, I can't 
not mention the fact that uh, Harris, Nathan Harris, put in a chip a chip kick through for um, a little grabber kick for, for Joy to collect, which is just, what did I write at the time? Disgraceful for a hooker to be putting in a chip like that and for it to be collected. Shouldn't be doing that. I think that, that, but puts uh, Retellix little dummy pass against the Aussies. It's it's a, it's a, even another level above that. Disgraceful stuff from a front row, unbelievable. But um, it just shows you the skills that's all around that team, man, and the confidence levels there were there. I mean, I guess when you're up by that many points, you can be confident because that was that was kind of when they were up like by 50 points. So it didn't it didn't really have any kind of waiting on it in terms of the result. But yeah, most of my notes here are all all black scoring and a few a few errors. The crowd from the Italians got into it when the Italians were on uh, attack towards the end, but the All Blacks weren't weren't letting in any tries this week. It, it, it's one of those ones when you're up by that many points, you think it'd be nice if they could kind of score a feel good try, give the crowd something to cheer about. Like the Japanese got a few tries against the All Blacks, but this was not going to happen this week. Um, at the end of the game, the stats. The run meter is 161 for Italy. Remember, they were 108 at half time. This is according to ESPN. Uh, 875 to New Zealand. So, I mean, what was the half time score? 31-3. I mean, I guess when you're down by that much, it's um, it's disheartening, and it really shows in the stats, man. Position territory still 60-40. Tackling percentage, New Zealand upped it to 81, but they didn't have that many tackles to make in the second half. Italy, 59. Penalties conceded 12 to the All Blacks, 7. If everything was going right for the All Blacks, man. 100% line out, 100% scrum. Italy's line out 72%. So, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a very good performance from the All Blacks. As I said, some of the guys who perhaps hadn't had a run for a while put in a good effort. That was nice. Uh, the Italians, unfortunately, didn't have their best week. So, um, yeah, that's a bit of a hiding. Um, hopefully they can kind of up their game for the Six Nations. Because, um, yeah, there's there's times when you see, I mean, if you watch this, the game against Australia, there is definitely some, some talented guys there and some young guys coming through. But, yeah, it is, it is hard to keep playing when you're already down by 30, 40 points. So that showed a bit today. Although there was a real dry period for a while, to be fair. And the, the All Blacks did look disjointed when a whole bunch of the secondary subs came on. I think, what was it, 52 minutes? d got his try from Moonga's kick. The next try was 73. So there was a fairly sizable gap where the Italians managed to keep the All Blacks trialless. But again, part of that was... Just uh, when they kind of cleared the bench, things got a bit out of kilter. But yeah, 66-3. Uh, no complaints from me as an All Black fan to sign off the season. Um, Would have liked to see a slightly closer game, but hey, I'm not going to complain about seeing my team score 10 tries. And uh, like I said, some really slick moments of brilliance from some of those guys. Uh, you guys let me know your thoughts on the game. And um, yeah, I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.